speaker is Dr. Fernando Castro uh, from Mexico, uh, and his title is Facial Nerve Magnetic Stimulation for Stroke and uh, Vasospasm. Fernando. Thank you, Chris. It's good to be back in Vancouver after finishing my fellowship here a couple of years ago and getting another fellowship in the, in the way of endovascular. That's why a functional neurosurgeon is going to talk to you about the stroke and best spasm. Then, um, my disclosure, so one of the enterprises that developed one of the stimulators that are, are going to talk about uh, hire me in, in order to, to do the endovascular part of that, but I don't have relation, more uh, economical relation with them. And always that I talk about this, about facial nerve stimulation for stroke, everybody asks me, why the facial? Why not the vagal trigeminal stimulation? Then I'm going to explain you that why. Be because there are some, some branches that the greatest superficial per petrosal branch sends to the sphenopalatine ganglion. And those projections go distributed in the plexi on, on either side of the adventitia of the anterior circulation, not in posterior one then. Then it's going to affect on, only the, the stroke that is affected to the carotid circulation only. Right? Then those are the two stimulators in the in the in the market. The the, the one we I helped to, to develop is uh, uh, stimulating the branches that are proximal to the sphenopalatine ganglia. And the other one is, is uh, stimulating the, the ganglia itself. And it's supposed to be like a bit superior because in, in, the, in the animal model, they, they, they study that the, the uh, increase of the cerebral blood flow is more than 100% of, of, of the blood flow when, when, when you stimulate the uh, preganglionic fibers than, than the ganglion itself. The, the ganglion itself is around 50%, right? Then uh, it has a, a motor function and part of the cerebral is the parasympathetic uh, also goes to the secretory and, and vasodilator fibers, right? Then the mechanism is um, has been studied too. It, it has a, 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 at least 50 years of the study about why why this this stimulation can can trigger uh, uh, vasodilatation and increase of the blood flow. Uh, there are models where, where they study the monkeys, cats, and rabbits, where the vasoactive pep intestinal peptide can, can, can be uh, implicated on that. But in humans, the nitric oxide is, 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 is the responsible for this response. There is a, a nice study where they try to stimulate all these, these uh, nerves. And the only two that got uh, uh, increase of the cerebral blood flow were the seventh and obviously the vagal nerve, right? But in the vagal nerve, we have another um, side effects like bradycardia, that, like, like, like that, that is not suitable for, for this purpose, right? Then uh, the best for, for getting this response in, in order to increase the cerebral blood flow is, is, is the seventh nerve. That's why we, we, we are doing this. In the next one, we are going to talk about this stimulator that uh, so, so somebody talked about uh, yesterday that this is uh, FDA approval for cluster he headache. This also that produce uh, vasodilatation and they increase their cerebral flow, but it has a problem that uh, it needs to be, um, the electron needs to be implanted by ENT and not any ENT. He, he needs to be certified and everything in order to to, to place exactly the, the, the electrode, right? Then it takes a while. This is the device for, for like that. The, the, the enterprise is called Brainsgate. And Brainsgate has a, a big um, uh, trial about this, but they didn't uh, prove that statistically sin significance in order to, to, to improve the cerebral blood flow yet. But uh, they have more years than the other stimulator that, that is not implantable, that is, is, is totally uh, uh, 
uh, free of a in, implantation for that. They, they have more time in the market, but they didn't have the, 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 the support data yet in, in, in order to, to be uh, well, well accepting all around the world. Then we saw an area of opportunity here using a coil. This is a coil that is uh, near to the, excuse me. This is a coil that is uh, placed uh, near to the pe pe pedrosal bone. And then we stimulate the part that is, uh, uh, the, the part of the facial nerve that is in the, in, in the petrous bone. Then in that way, we, we, we can get a stimulation of the facial nerve and in order to increase the blood flow. But how we prove that? We did first, uh, obviously, like uh, any device, we, we did an animal model and the, we, we published that in, in Stroke. And we, uh, we, we did it with um, sheep, we did it with pigs, but our main study was with dogs. We, we took like 12 dogs in order to place uh, uh, endovascular uh, clot in the, in the anterior circulation. I'm here doing the stop thing and uh, we stimulate the facial nerve with neural navigation in order to know that we are stimulating the the nerve itself and and we get this kind of response at, at the 60 minute and 90 minute of post stimulation we, we we get the blood flow almost to the baseline and imagine one side was with a clot in the anterior circulation and the other side was our control it wasn't with 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 any stroke then we proved that it, it helps then we went to the next step uh, we also did a study in hemorrhagic model because our idea is that maybe in the ambulance the, the patient that has a stroke uh, is going to get this device and get the the facial nerve stimulated in both sides but you know, if to to be able to do that, we don't know if the facial if the patient has a hemorrhagic or ischemic stroke. Then we need to do something that is safer for, for the patient. Then we tried also with a hemorrhagic stroke, and, and we saw that we we don't increase the size of the of the hematoma. Then it's safe to to do it, and is is going to be easier, right? Because for for example, for TPA, you need to first to do the CT then then it cannot be done in, in the ambulance in the way to the hospital it needs to be in the hospital itself then our, our idea is that maybe before getting to the hospital we, we can get this stimulation increases the cerebral blood flow and gain some minutes in order to to get another therapy like thrombectomy calignite thrombectomy or, or or tpa right then we did and we prove only an increase a uh, subtle increase of the icp but it was only five minutes. And we think it's because of the movement, right? When you stimulate the nerve, then there's some movement there. But, but uh, it was transitory and it was not significantly, uh, statistically significant. Then the, our next step was uh, recruit um, young adults and, and doing like that. And we, we did that terrified young adults with this, and and we uh, obtained this this increase of their cerebral blood flow in 32 percent, but only in a third of the adults. Why? Because not everybody responds to that. It, because as you know, we have um, anatomic differences. Um, we have uh, the collaterality of a patient that is getting a stroke is different. That's why some patients has an, at least three or four hours in order to get a, a really big infarct but another can, can last 24 hours. And it, it depends on, uh, in a difference, anatomically difference of, of the collaterality. Then uh, we consider that maybe a third of us are responders and two thirds are not responders, right? But uh, at least a therapy that is uh, really safe, then, then we all can, can, can get it, right? Before getting to the hospital. Then our next step, was uh, doing with patients with patients with uh, a stroke we couldn't get the, the approval for a stroke itself be, be, because we couldn't we, we could delay the the treatment itself then we tried with patients with uh, 
sobriety uh, hemorrhage that has symptomatic bispasm that is uh, considered a condition that where where the patient has ischemia. Then we we did this in the hospital the, where I get my training in the vascular, and what we tried in six patients was that uh, after the stimulation, the first facial nerve stimulation with neural navigation, we could get increase of the cerebral blood flow because uh, we produce a, a, a vasodilatation. In four of the six patients, they didn't need the, the, the they, they were supposed to be uh, submitted to chemical um, angioplasty. I mean, we, we put a catheter in the, in the, uh, in the carotid, and we inject nimolipine, but tiny dose of nimolipine, and that for us is is helping for some hours to the patient to 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 treat the bispasm for subarachnoid hemorrhage. Then after that, we get FDA approval, and this is uh, going to be studied in Cleveland Clinic about this. And our next step is going to be a multicentric study in stroke patients. Then, and my conclusions would be that if these uh, preclinical findings were to prove true, then um, in clinical settings and with a simple, straightforward design, a facial nerve stimulation such, such as this vital flow might be used for stroke treatment at the earliest opportunity and baspasma, obviously, because related to, the, to, to a sobriety hemorrhage in a rupture aneurysm. And successful development of, of a partial nerve stimulation would, would represent the, the first fundamentally new therapy in chemical stroke in 20 years. You, you know uh, the, the TPA was in the 1980. Uh, the, we are in, in the stage where there are the re retrievers, uh, right? Then we need another therapy in order to help that. Right? And we think that uh, this could help out a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Fernando. Any questions uh, for Dr. Castro Prado? Uh, Philip Slotty, we'll wait for the microphone. And I would remind you that uh, we are the World Neurosurgical Federation for Cranial Nerve Disorders. Most of us have been drawn here by MDD, but there are other cranial nerves and other ways of treating it. Yeah. Thanks for the fantastic talk. Um, I think this is a future of new modulation, right? We go into ICU treatment, stuff like that, and yeah. go into all the vegetative stuff. And um, there's been studies on SPG stimulation for stroke and for visospasm. And in the animal models, most of the animals had a, had a significant, clinically significant yes. rebound following cessation of the stimulation. Um, have you looked into that? Because it's a problem, right? You, you improve uh, blood flow, and when you switch it off, they get a significant dip and they get a major stroke. Yeah, but uh, no, we, the studies that we reviewed about that, there is increase, right? As I mentioned, like uh, fifty percent for the for the ganglia, and the, the perianglion fibers are better, like more than one hundred percent. But there is not like a rebound like that. Uh, you always help, yeah. And we 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 tried in the in the models, uh, as I told you, sheep, pigs, dogs, and humans. We we did with young young, young adults, and you never get worse than you do. You only go to the baseline, maybe. And as I said, not everybody responds, right? Only one third of the, of the population only. Yeah. Thanks for really interesting work. Um, the mechanism, you think, is via parasympathetic, right? Yeah. Um, so do you actually see meiosis in the eye on the side that you're getting no, that? No, okay. not that much. We, we have some um, uh, side effects, but in, I think it's more related to the, because it's not like a focus uh, stimulation, right? Sure. We we also stimulate maybe the spinal nerve, then we get some contraction of the neck and something like that. But our main worry was because if we stimulate too much the temporal, we can cause uh, epilepsy, right? We can cause seizures. Then we modify the the coil. The coil was first an eight like that, two circles. And now it's a panda coil, we said it's one and two small ones. I went to Leipzig, obviously, yeah, with the, with the uh, bioengineering, bio yeah, to, to, to modify everything on, on that. But um, we don't have a specifically that, that response that you t told me about.
Fernando, thank you, thank you very much. Um, I wonder if these patients experience tinnitus when, when this is being used. Experience what? Sorry. Tinnitus. Ah, tinnitus. Mm. Uh, no, we, we ask about it, no, because be, before for the young adults, we had to pass first uh, ENT, auditory uh, exam, complete auditory exam, and also some ophthalmology too, right, in, in order to be approved. For that, and we have an ambulance and everything right. to go to a hospital if something. But when happens. when the device is on, yeah. did... no, because look, we tried. Everybody tried. I tried in, in person. That it the, feels yeah, like yeah. somebody is slapping your your side. <laughs> it's uncomfortable, not painful. Then to my patients, I used to say, it's it's not going to be like that. Uh, too risky, right? We tried. Everybody in the team tried. Then we didn't have nothing. Yeah, nobody has tinnitus or something like that. It, it might be the orientation of the nerve, because the eighth nerve is going to come right at you, whereas the seventh nerve is, and maybe there's, you, you can induce a current maybe. in a nerve like that, but not one that's, that's come. It could be as simple as yeah. that. And first, we did everything with neural navigation, because we need to be sure that we are stimulating the, the facial, right? Then we tried to be really focused in the future and we are we are we're trying how 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 we are going to to design the 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 helmet i mean for to to stimulate that 